Welcome to Hope of Glory Ministries. I'm Pastor Sandra Campbell. I would like to talk to you for a little while about the importance of having godly revelation in your life. So I'm going to focus on the prophets of God and I would like to dedicate this message to the prophets. The Bible divided the prophets into two groups. Um, the major prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel. And then you had your minor prophets known as the 12. Some of these names you recognize. Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Habakkuk, Nahum, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and the last book of the Old Testament, Malachi. Now, a prophet was a man to whom God spoke. Um, prophets were very important because for hundreds of years after Moses, no one had heard God speak. So God began to choose prophets and send prophets to his people. He would speak to the prophets so that the people would know the heart and mind of God and thus he would be able to lead them. Now prophets work very closely with kings and priests so that they would know um, what God's desire was for the people. Um, but oftentimes the life of a prophet was a very lonely and solitary life because people were afraid of them. Um, they would go and stand at the gates to deliver God's word and when they would, they would look as though they were in a trance and being used as a mouthpiece out of whom God would speak. And so um, because of this, people would just kind of shy away from them. And another reason people stayed away from prophets uh, was because they would deliver the uh, unadulterated word of God, which um, oftentimes meant gloom and doom, messages of God sending his wrath. And so because of these messages from an angry God, you know, um, oftentimes kings would have these prophets beheaded. And so if you were called to be a prophet, you know, it was not unnatural for you to be afraid and to fear for your life because you knew that some of these messages people wouldn't like and people would, you know, uh, be afraid of you and therefore uh, be ready to silence you and put you to death. Um, and this is exactly, you know, why a lot of people said, don't kill the messenger, but they would kill these prophets who were just messengers from God delivering a message, but they were the ones who, you know, would get the ax. Um, I would like to focus tonight on one particular prophet named Isaiah, to whom early in his career, God gave an amazing revelation of the end at the beginning. Um, in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1, Isaiah is recorded as saying, In the year King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord. He was high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Lord, have mercy. King Isaiah had ruled for 52 years, and he had done many great works, and he was all some people ever knew as a ruler. And they attached to him such a significance as being the king of kings, the greatest ruler to ever live. And um, he was deified and, you know, almost worshipped. But God gave Isaiah a vision to encourage the people that the king of kings was yet to come and he would be high and lifted up. 
and he would be the greatest ruler ever. He would rule in heaven even, and his train, he would be so majestic that his train would fill the temple. And so over the course of Isaiah's life, God would begin to reveal bits and pieces about Jesus to him. God would give him these great revelations. In Isaiah 6 and 1, um, God gave Isaiah another revelation, which was, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall rest upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, uh, the Almighty God, uh, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace, of course, you know, we're talking about Jesus and the virgin birth, and that actually did happen in the New Testament. We find that um, over Isaiah's journey, God revealed even more intimate things about this ruler who was yet to come, this king of kings. In Isaiah 53 and 5, um, Isaiah in a prophetic trance said, for he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes, we are healed. So Isaiah knew him as a healer through revelation. Revelation is so important, friends. And then in Isaiah 54, verse 17, Isaiah said, no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper every tongue that shall rise against us in judgment thou shalt condemn for this is our heritage as a servant of the Lord our righteousness is of thee saith the Lord Isaiah knew Jesus as a protector through godly revelation hallelujah revelation it's just so important to the life of a Christian, yet you have so many people in church who don't believe the virgin birth, who don't believe the resurrection. You know, you need to open yourself up to spiritual things because God is real. Jesus is real. We find that over the course of Isaiah's life in Isaiah 61 and 1, um, that Isaiah in a prophetic utterance says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. Um, he had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. We know that this is the very thing that a 12-year-old Jesus in Luke quoted from Isaiah, who quoted it from God, who got it from the mouth of Jesus. Amen? Revelation is so important. It means everything to the life of his people, to, to us. You know, um, we know that Isaiah would go on to say that the Lord has in chapter 62 a, uh, a posterity blessing for those of us who've ever been bound, our ancestors who were bound, who would one day receive a great blessing, a double portion, amen? And he went on and on with these revelations about Jesus, the king who was yet to come, who, you know, is the king of kings, the Lord of lords, the most majestic person to ever rule, to ever reign, so that people would be encouraged. And you need revelation in your life. Um, one of the things you can do if you don't have it is to make the Lord a priority. Um, the first thing you do when you wake up, say, thank you, Lord. Let him be the last person you speak to when you go to bed at night. Say your prayers. Uh, begin to seek him in his word. Become an avid studier of the Bible. You'll find him within the pages of the Bible. Um, you need to open yourself up to him so that you can receive 
um, spiritual things. The more you talk to him, the more you'll hear from him. Um, I would like for you to begin tonight if you've never welcomed the Lord into your heart. Uh, I would like to invite you to Christ. Give you an invitation. Repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Friend, if you've said that prayer, then you have been invited to the body of Christ. You are a believer. Now find a Bible teaching church and become a member so that you can grow in Christ and begin to receive revelations of the end, amen, at the beginning so that you can see the dream that God has for you and then begin to go after it the way that God showed him a vision of Jesus who would be born thousands of years later so that the people would have hope because he is the hope of glory. God bless.